today on Ask This Old House. Ever seen this happen? I'll show you what causes this kind of violent outburst. Stop. So since we've moved in, Richard, we've discovered a couple of problems with the water. Uh, the first one is that it's very acidic. The second one is that it has a lot of iron in it. And the third one is that it has a lot of radon in it. This house looks moving ready, right? I'll tell you everything you need to know to paint a room. Uh, why didn't we tape tomorrow? Because professional painters like me and you, we don't need tape. That's next on Ask This Old House. Mark, it looks like you have been busy. All kinds of remodeling going on here. How much have you done yourself? I do as much of it as I can myself. We've uh, done a complete gut job on the place, and uh, we've been slowly putting it back together for a few years. Who's we? Uh, my father and I. Great. That's a team building exercise. Yeah, uh, but one of the things we haven't been able to fix is an issue with the water. Okay, and you called me. Perfect. Yep. So every time we do a load of laundry, something interesting happens I'd like to show you. Okay. So water's on, looks pretty normal. Whoa, that's not normal. Looks like you're getting the air into your water supply somehow. So we're on well water here. We actually have a fairly complex system downstairs. All right, you'll have to take me down there. Let's see it. So since we've moved in, Richard, we've discovered a couple of problems with okay. the water. Uh, the first one is that it's very acidic. The second one is that it has a lot of iron in it. Yeah. And the third thing is there's a lot of radon in the water. Otherwise, it's perfect, right? Right. <laughs> That's the thing about a well. You just don't know what you're going to get out of the ground. When you have a municipal water supply, you have a certain assumption about water quality and volume. But in your case, you just don't know. Let me take you through what you've got here so far. Here's the typical line right here that goes down into the well. Who knows if it's 50, 100, 150 feet down. Depends on the water aquifer. You've got a pump at the bottom, I assume, made out of stainless steel. Sometimes we see a pump up here. But in this case, I assume it's under the, under the ground, comes up here. Here's the pressure switch. This will bring that pump on and off. But you don't want it to come on and off all the time, so there's always a well tank like this. This pushes the well's water supply into this tank. There's a diaphragm right here and air on the other side. Now the pump pumps and creates a charge ready to go for the house right here. And this is really what most people have when they have a well. Everything else you've added is for your water quality issues. This looks like a sediment or neutralizing tank right here. So you can see the water, instead of going right out to the house now, this is shut off. The water goes through, down through beads of resin or, or a filter, comes back up here. And now let's follow it. It goes over here. And you come here. So this, this I've seen before. This is really important. This is a radon mitigation device. These are great. And this is going to take the radon out of the water and dump it to out to the roof. Water comes in here, comes through the tank. You've got another pump right here, OK? And then you've got another sediment filter right there. So you've got a lot of stuff going on. And I, I think I have a hunch about what's causing that air upstairs. But I think it's better to show you. I'll be back in just a minute, OK? Well, I think that the source of the problem is this radon mitigation device, and I brought another one here to help understand what's going on. But I've got to tell you, I'm thrilled that you have this installed. Radon is a big deal. You know, we tend to think about radon as coming up through the basement floor in the air, but it also can occur in the water, as you know. And radon is a carcinogen. It's a naturally occurring gas. It's a byproduct of uranium, and it can happen anywhere. It, it's, you know, it's not just that you have to have a nuclear power plant near you. It's a naturally occurring in the ground. And number two cause of lung cancer. So let me take you inside. You see this right here? Here's a water line right here, and here's the exhaust, right? You can see the water line here and exhaust. Now underneath the inlet, you can see there's a spray nozzle right here, and water's going to come out here and spray into the top of this upper tray. And the water goes around right here. But if you look carefully, see these holes down at the bottom? Oh, yeah. So it's much like those air holes on a table hockey game, you know, where the air is coming this way. There's a blower underneath that's going to push air up through the water that goes around here. And as that does, the air coming through will actually split off or pull out the radon gas out of the water. So let me show you on the bottom side. You see right here? See the holes? Yep. So there's incredible power of force, air coming this way, coming up through. The water works its way around down through this pipe. So now, when it goes to the bottom, 
that water now starts to fill the reservoir. You can see there's a takeoff at the bottom and two floats right here, a float and a backup float to tell the system when to come on and off. Now this water will go up to this level and be about 10 or 12 gallons here. Now, your well pump, before the system was installed, used to supply water to the entire house. Now it really only supplies water to this radar mitigation per se. Let me show you what I mean. Water comes into here, and when that valve comes on, sends the water down through that spray nozzle, it goes through here, and it shuts off. This is a pressureless tank. You know, it's not like a water heater in the basement. This is a pressureless tank open to atmosphere. There's really just a reservoir of water with no pressure, which means there would be no way for that water now to be forced out through the faucets. So when you have one of these, you have to have a completely separate second well pump and well tank right here, and that's what you've got. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. So now it pushes out here to the, to the outside. Now what the manufacturer wants to do is to make sure that you have more water going in than coming out. So they put a flow restrictor right here at seven gallons on the inbound side and a six gallon flow restrictor on the outbound side. Well, what happens if you don't have seven gallons per minute over there? What happens if there's a restriction, which means you don't have enough water coming in? Why would that happen? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. I mean, the well could be different levels of water uh, volume in it, right? The pump could be variable. But one of the prime culprits is actually adding additional filtration upstream of it. If a filter does its job, what does it do? It starts to clog and, until you clean it again. So now there may be times during the end when that's a little bit dirty that we no longer get the water. Now, this is only going to be showing up, I think, when we do something like this wash machine you told me about, right? If you have a regular faucet that's two and a half gallons a minute, you're never going to draw down that reservoir. But with a top loader like this, you might be looking for 25 gallons of water here. There's only 10 over there. I think what happens in this case, that water coming here will pull the air that should have gone up through the vent pipe and pull it right in. So I think the solution is we need to give you control to make sure that we never take more water out of this device than is allowed in. We're going to add a secondary valve here, another flow restrict that we can set together. And that means no matter what happens with the neutralizer, the pump, the well, or anything that could change supply, we'll always make sure we never pull air the wrong way. Sound good? Sounds good, Richard. Mark, water's back on. I've cut in a new shutoff valve right here, so you still end up with the service valves on both sides of the filter. I, while I had it drained, I put a new filter cartridge in too. But I took your existing ball valve and actually adjusted it in such a way with it running, I took a bucket and a timer to be sure we were less than five gallons per minute coming through the system, so it'll never happen again. I always take the handle off so nobody changes it by mistake, but you can always adjust in the future. Time for the test. Let me run the washing machine and I'll see you upstairs. Okay. How we do? Any burping going on up here? Haven't seen any. I think we fixed it. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget that faucet. Enjoy, my friend. Thanks for your help, Richard. Right, great. Turn the water off. Don't waste water. See you, man. You know, most basements are complicated. This guy's got a whole <laughs> nother level of complexity going on down Let there. Let me try to demystify with this uh, illustrator here. So this radar mitigation tank in normal mode has water just in the bottom third right there. And then, as we mentioned, water comes from the well right here, and we want it to come in at like seven gallons a minute. 
and we want this to go out at six gallons a minute, okay? So that's normal mode. Now, what happens in between it is that water that sprays down into this nozzle has some water, but also has air and radon. And this blower fan comes on right here and pushes it this way, and it picks up the radon, picks up the air, and it leaves out to above the house. Mm -hmm. So in normal mode, everything's in balance. But what we found on this one is that this seven gallons per minute didn't always exist, right? You had the pump down under the well, it came through a restriction that could change all the time, and all of a sudden, as that restriction happened, seven could become six, could become five, and all of a sudden, this six gallons per minute won the day, and when that happened, this pump would pull, the water level would go down, and now the air and radon, instead of going up that pipe, would pull the wrong way mm. and come right out through the faucet right there. Which means you not only got the burping, which was annoying, right. but the stuff that you're actually pulling, the air, it's, it was actually radon, radon air that you wanted. Totally dangerous. So, so it's more than just burping. Correct. So it's an important story. I wanted to actually show that there is a device that can work when it's per, uh, adjusted properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, And if you're worried about radon, there is a radon test right here that you can put a little water in here and send that off to be tested. Right. There's another one that you can test what's going on in the air in your basement. And you left him with the ability to continue to dial That's in right. that adjustment That's right. If, if there's, there's a restriction, to. he can always adjust it on the discharge yeah. side. All right. Good information. Right. And more importantly, does John Madden know you have his telestrator? Well, this is the Trethestrator. <laughs> Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. This house looks move-in ready, right? Why I like the look of these stairs, they have some major issues. But the biggest concern I have is safety. This staircase is not to code, and the building code is all about numbers. The first number that you need to know is the height of the railing from the stairway. So if you take your tape measure, from the nosing of the stair tread and you hold it plumb and measuring up, the top of the railing should be 34 to 38 inches. This railing height is way too low. The next number you need to know if you have open risers like these is the space between the top of the tread to the underside of the tread. That space cannot exceed four inches. Now you could close this in with a riser board, but that will change the look of it or you can put a filler strip under the top tread here or the top of the bottom tread, making that space four inches or less. The other time that four inches comes into play is when you're placing balusters, or in this case, cables. The spacing between those balusters and cables should not exceed four inches. So if I measure this from the underside of the railing to that cable, and look at here, it's not even close to four inches. It's also very important when installing cables that you put them under a lot of tension so that if you pull or push down on them, the space will not be greater than four inches. So why does four inches matter? Because a baby or a toddler could be crawling around and his head could get stuck between the balusters or the cables or even the risers on the stair treads and that could cause suffocation. Let's say your home inspector points out these problems in the staircase, but you still want the house. What would you do? You could ask the seller to repair the stair prior to closing, or you could fix it yourself and use that as a negotiating tool to lower the price. Now, if you don't have young children, this may not be a big deal for you. You can always move in at your own risk. But if you do have young children, you may want to reconsider this house. Thanks so much for coming, Mauro. No problem. I love your house. Thank you. My fiance and I have been here just about four months now. We're getting married in three weeks. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so we've been trying to get a lot of work done before the big day when we'll take some time off. Yeah, um, it looks like so... you already have done some samples here for Yes. <laughs> we've been busy making design decisions. Um, we'd like to update the colors in this room, okay. go a little darker on top white on the bottom as well as the trim around the windows. So we've got our paint samples on the wall, we did the ceiling, 
That looks good. Thanks. <laughs> it made a huge difference in the room, which was really amazing. Um, but before we got to the walls, we were thinking about the windows, and that's where we got really nervous. Um, the windows, the trim's really dark. We didn't want to slap a lot of paint on there, get paint on the glass, or jam gotcha. up the window. So we got stuck. Okay, but I'm happy that you started with the ceiling. That's the first thing you do when you paint a room. But I will show you the right sequence to do this job. Awesome. Okay. Since you already had done the ceiling, let's work on the trim. Why are we working on the trim first and not the walls? Okay. It's very easy for you to cut the trim first and then the walls. Okay. Okay. We're going to start with the window here. I'm going to show you this product. Okay. This is a liquid mask. I'm just going to apply it to the glass to avoid overspill paint. It goes on white and dries clear. Okay, you want to try to do some work? Sure. Always start at the corner. Yeah, okay. going across. Yeah, long strokes. Mm -hmm. You can go back and forth all the way down, and then you can go forward. Yep. Mm -hmm. And don't need too much pressure on the brush. Just go nice and smooth. Okay. Beautiful. Well, now that the liquid mask has turned from white to clear, it's time for me to put my second and final coat. Well, Rebecca, we're waiting for the mask and lid to dry on a second coat, and uh, I'm gonna show you what we picked for your trim. This is a white semi-gloss finish. Okay. Okay. Um, it's actually this one here, you can see it. Yeah, it looks a little shinier than what I was expecting. I was thinking maybe an eggshell or a matte for the trim. Well, let me walk through this paint finishes here. Okay. At the high gloss finish, really hard to apply, but it's really easy to clean. Most popular for doors and trim. Semi-gloss, same thing, is really hard to apply. Really good for trim, easy to clean up, will pick up after people's hand. Grease and oil and everything, really good to clean up. Satin finish has less sheen than the other two. Um, not so hard to apply, but it's not as durable as the other two first ones. One of the most popular finish for cabinetry and some trim. Um, then we go for the eggshell, which has this flatter look, really good for walls and plastered walls. Matte finish is no sheen at all and is also not good for high traffic areas because it's really hard to clean. All right, then I guess we're going with the semi-gloss. Sounds good. Looks like the, my masking liquid is drying, turning clear. Time to paint some trim. All right, sounds good. Okay. So first what we're going to do, open this can. And I am going to pour some of this paint in this little bucket. You should never work out of the painting cans. You know why? You might bring some painting debris, you might bring some dust into the painting can, and then you're going to ruin the whole can. Yeah. Okay? I always get a little container and drop some of this paint right in there. All right, that's good enough. So now, also before we paint, I'm going to add some paint additive into the paint that we have. So this way the paint won't fall too thick into the window frames. Okay. All right. Let's make this two together. Let's go nice and easy. Okay, Becca, we're ready to paint. I got this inch and a half painting brush. The trick is you don't have to put this brush way deep into the bucket. All you gotta do is use it two fingers, just like that. Okay. Okay? All right. This is the one we're gonna use for this area here. Remember, okay. two fingers, that's it. Good, that look good. All right. All right. Where do I start? Always from the top. Start right at the corner and go all the way down. All right. Becca, don't need to be so fast with the glass, okay? Okay. Remember, we have a, a, a mask and liquid already dry. All right. Okay, before you paint, I'm going to stick this spider knife right there. This way you don't put any paint on the jam. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's work this body knife down again. The window's starting to look good already. Yeah, a lot brighter. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to do this part of the window here. Okay. We're going to push this up. 
We're gonna bring this down. Okay, so we should have some, a little bit to do here, a little bit to do there, and that's it. What we gotta do first, always the inside. Yep, all right. First. Yeah, this masking liquid is so much better than painter's tape. No, it's better than put paint on the windows and put paint on glass and you have to scrape. There's a lot of work and a lot of time. Okay, Rebecca, let's get the side of the trim. Okay, we're gonna start by cutting with the two and a half brush. The trick is it keep parallel out with the walls and the brush goes like this way. Okay, one long stroke, you go all the way down. Okay. And then we paint the face. Okay. All right? Waiting for the first coat on the trim to dry. Let's work on a chair rail and door casings. Sounds good. Right. Now you're gonna start your cut. You're gonna use a two and a half inch brush again. Okay. Okay, start from that corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, if you need to move your brush, move it down. Uh, why didn't we tape, Mauro? Because professional painters like me and you, we don't need tape. Look at that. Nice. Cool. I like the color you pick. Thank you, it's called Stargazer. Great, and we use an eggshell finish for the walls here. Yeah, that'll be nice with the semi-gloss on the trim. It will be perfect. Okay, the kind is good. I'm coming behind you with the roller. I'm gonna roll the walls, and like painting brushes, there's a lot to choose from. What I picked for this project is this nine inches microfiber rollers, okay? That will give us a nice finish, especially because we're using eggshell. Since the bottom of the walls and the baseboards are the same colors, we're gonna use the same finish for the first coat. With the second coat, we're gonna use eggshell for the walls and semi-gloss finish for the baseboard because it's part of the trim. Okay, I saved the best for last. It's time to remove the masking liquid that we applied earlier this morning. Okay. So I'll go like this. Take a razor knife and go nice and easy around the sash. Okay, take a look at this. Just lift one end, right? What? Take a look at That's it. so cool. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. It's so clean. Wow, that is really cool. Look at this. That's amazing. Liquid mask. Well, I gotta say, Rebecca, you pick nice colors for this room. Well, thanks so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Enjoy your wedding. Thank you. This is one more thing off the to-do list. Next time on Ask This Old House. We're headed to Texas to lend a hand after Hurricane Harvey. When we actually opened the door and stepped out, the water was up to our chest. We'll show you what it takes to clean up things like mud and mold after a storm. We'll see what happens to houses that can't be saved and we'll spotlight the good work that the volunteer groups are doing to bring their neighbors home. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.